In this video, we're going to see how to create this elegant, sophisticated Dutch pour with these beautiful cells and effects. That's coming right up. Thanks for being here with me at my channel. Okay, my friends, I've already touched up the sides and I went ahead and I put the sand color across where I actually want to lay my flood coat of the sand color because I noticed that this sand color is pretty sheer. Now here is a pro tip for you. If you mix up your paints and if you notice there's any little chunky pieces as you're stirring up your color, such as what was happening to me when I was stirring up this little cup, you can go ahead and put either a piece of pantyhose or in this case, I have a piece of tulle which is the, the fabric that they make bridal veils out of. You can put that right across there, put a rubber band across it, and you have an instantaneous strainer for any of your products that have chunks in it. I had figured out this tip for myself many years ago, back in the beginning stages of my fluid art journey, but I also have a strong background skills in sewing, costuming, and making things work on the fly within a lot of the work I've done in the past. So these skills, they just gave me uh, instant ideas within uh, products, supplies that could work. Okay, so as you see, I'm also putting on my flood coat of the background colors. And I have basically split my canvas in two between the sand color and the white. So here you can see I'm straining that color right out. Now all of my colors that I've used except for the white are leftover colors. These are all leftovers that I've had. Most of them have been sitting around quite a while. And so here's another pro tip for you. This is pro tip number two for this video. And that is if you have a lot of colors sitting around or even a few and you'd like to use some of them, take them all out, start to see what might go with each other to make a pleasing painting in the end. And if there's anything that's sort of close, but not quite workable within the palette that you see emerging among the colors that you happen to just have there, you can go ahead and add a little bit of other colors to tweak them a little bit, but you're still using your leftover colors. All right, I sometimes do this when maybe I don't have enough colors within the leftovers that I see. Maybe I need one or two more to give it enough contrast and richness and depth, but maybe one or two of those colors isn't quite a fit. But I can see that if I add a little bit of something else, I can tweak it just ever so slightly and make it fit beautifully within the palette. Okay, so I can't tell you what all these colors are because like I said, they've been sitting around and most of them are custom blended. I can tell you that there is a copper in there that I put down a few colors ago and that copper is likely its own color straight out of the tube. The coral is a coral that I use a lot. It's a folk art color. I think it's called fire coral. This particular version of it might have something else mixed in it. I couldn't swear that it doesn't. And I'm putting in just a little extra white because I know I am going to appreciate that in that sand portion. I want that to show up a little bit. I'm showing the application from the side view. It's actually a good thing that I had my side view camera on. I don't normally do that these days. I used to do it all the time in some of my earlier pours back in the more beginning stages of my channel, but I haven't been doing it for a while and something told me to do it for this particular pour. And I'm really glad that I did because my overhead camera actually stopped filming and I didn't realize it. If I didn't have my side view camera for this painting, I would never have been able to show you the rest of the creation. So if you'd be a dear, please go ahead and give a like. Leave me a comment at any point during the creation video, or hey, you can even leave me a comment now and you can leave another one later if you have something else to say as you see the rest of it unfold. And please subscribe and click the bell if you are interested in seeing more of my content in the times ahead. It would be great to have you here as part of my little pouring family. 
I'm just adding a ribbon of the base color to either side of my ribbon of the other colors. This is the technique that was developed by Rinska Downa. Rinska Downa is the original creator of the Dutch Pour, my friends, in case you did not know that. So many people do that now that it's easy to get lost anymore who created what technique, but Rinska Downa is the creator of the Dutch Pour. And she does it like this, where she'll put an extra ribbon of the base coat near the sides of the colors that she's added onto the canvas. This helps give a flow when she starts to push this paint with the uh, blow dryer that you'll see ahead. Not everyone likes this technique because it does make a softer effect in the final blowout. So if you like that effect, then this is a good way to go about it. And this is what Rinska Downa preferred and it's why she chose to do it this way. But other artists do not do it this way because they like their blowout to have a stronger defined look when they blow it out. So it depends on what you're going for. So my blow dryer is a little tricky to be honest. It's a little bit too big and the condenser is not the best style of condenser for a blowout pour. However, I do think that some of the results I like in my blowouts are achieved because of it. However, there are certain downsides to it that do make working with that style of condenser. I think that's what they call it, that little attachment part. Um, the style that I have does have some pros if you learn how to work with it, but it does have a lot of cons. And my blow dryer, like I said, is a little large, which also makes it a little cumbersome. I will be adding to my blow dryer collection in the near future. I believe you can get good at making any blow dryer work, um, but you just have to practice. So this is what the first stage of the blowout looks like. I'm gonna stop here with the blow dryer and any additional blowing that I do is going to be this gentle approach that you see right here with just blowing with my mouth. love all the beautiful cells that are starting to pop out. I know you don't have the best view of it from this angle, but you can see it a little bit. And by using my mouth to blow, I can be more careful by not, um, by not taking so much of a risk of blowing over these really pretty cells that are forming. If I were to take the blow dryer back in there at that point, it'd be too much and they'd be gone. And sometimes even with your mouth, you'll make a mistake, or at least I do, and I sometimes will end up blowing over something I really didn't want to, but the chances of doing it if you go into the mouth blowing are less. You can also use a straw, however, by using a straw, you take the, the condensing of your breath to an even smaller focus, and it really depends on if you want the type of effect that you can get with a straw as to whether you would want to use one. And there are my very fun polka dot pajamas. I tend to like to do my acrylic pouring in old pajamas that I don't mind getting paint on. And they're also a little bit thicker than a lot of my other clothing. And if I do happen to get paint on them, it usually doesn't go through to my skin. But the downside is, is that I look a little bit silly in my videos if they are caught in the footage, such as the case here. You can just go ahead and give a quick laugh along with me if you like. Or hey, maybe you might want to start wearing some old pajamas too when you do your acrylic pours. Maybe that's actually pro tip number three and I had not even thought about that up front. You can go ahead and let me know in the comments if you think that's actually a pro tip or even just a tip at all that you might like to try out if you have not already been wearing old pajamas when you do your acrylic pouring. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on that in the comments below. So thank you for taking a moment to let me know that. So I'm using the back end of this pen to do some embellishing and because of the glare from the window that's on the other side of me, on that wall that's behind that little wooden chest back there, it is creating a bit of a glare on the canvas and especially with the camera at this angle, 
you can't really get a good look at what I'm doing as I'm doing it, but you can tell I'm doing embellishments that I think look nice within what is on my canvas at the time. So remember, that's another pro tip, and if you like the pajama tip as pro tip number three, then this would be pro tip number four. If you don't like pro tip number three for the pajamas, then this is pro tip number three. You always must, well, ideally you ought to, it would behoove you to, shall I just say, to always be taking a moment to look at what you've got on your canvas before deciding what to do next. So I'm actually holding my camera in my left hand now because my overhead camera, remember it stopped, it stopped filming and before this point I realized that, but there was really nothing I could do about it. Um, at the time I had paint everywhere like on my gloves and I, um, I would have had to stop and unload that camera, empty it out and then set it all back up again. I was not able to do that. So I was holding my secondary camera in my left hand while I was trying to film what I was doing with my embellishing. So it's not the best, but hey, it's not the worst. And look at all these beautiful, beautiful little details and cells and lacings that appeared in this painting. It is so pretty. It is so elegant. And I really love the warmth of this piece. It's really quite lovely. I love those little ribbon effects down there toward the left. I love that. That could have happened a lot more and I would have been even happier. But with fluid art, you know, we sometimes get some happy surprises and uh, we're not even quite sure how they appeared, which is the case of those beautiful lines down there. So stay tuned because I do have some really nice close-up shots up ahead. So stay tuned for that and let me know what you think of the final result of this footage. I'll let you enjoy the rest of this with the music for your relaxation. And thank you again for being here. I'll see you at my channel again really soon.